Does anybody have any questions for us or you guys? I have one. Yes. How do you keep people from stealing your cameras? <laughs> you know, that's a great question. How do you keep people from stealing our cameras? It's crazy, but in we have only had two issues of vandalism for 50 cameras for six years. That's because we're in Nebraska, <laughs> yes. <we're all laughs> it really is amazing. I know it would be a different deal in, in other places. And we do have, you know, there are strategies that, that you can use, but uh, we've been really lucky. We mostly have trouble with the thing that we never, ever thought about was spiders building webs <laughs> in, front of the, in front of the glass with the housing, you know, with the little overhang that keeps the, the rain and the, and the snow away. Spiders and birds using them as per perches to poop on and all that stuff, but, um, but we've been pretty lucky. Art obviously thanks, uh, draws together our emotional self as well as our technical self. And I just wanted to hear from the artists about your experience in that, uh, in, in policy, in um, creating change for society, for people. Stay here. I'll answer next. Well, uh, yeah, art does uh, strike a chord, and um, it uh, is outside of the normal frame framework of a uh, of, of a science endeavor. There's a process uh, in science, and there's a process in art. And uh, they, they, they strike us differently. And I, I was just going to say um, something similar had been said. If, if management that you're working for is um, clear on their vision and their mission, it makes it a whole lot easier for you to do your work. And that's, that's really the experience that we have. And, and it, We've had some great experience and we've had some not so great experiences, <laughs> but it's really you know kind of a trickle down what what is managed uh, uh, on the site reflects what happens with the art that we create. You know, just a second. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it, it's hubris to think that we could design our way out of the the, the fix we're in, um, but. I think every effort and relying on uh, imagery and uh, consciousness that that this is a this is a pretty big task, uh, and everybody is involved, and it deserves a great art with great images and great science. And I, I think. I think both uh, science and art begins with wonder. You know, if you're, a, if you're a scientist, you're wondering about something. You're trying to dig into it and explore it. And what's come, you know, you may be using your brain, but you're also using your heart. And I think, I think being an artist is the exact same way. And so um, the goal is, is, you know, for us on a very basic level, it's just to get people to connect. It's try to build appreciation and you get, you can appreciate, you know, it's that old adage, you appreciate something, you value it, you value it, you love it, you love it, you'll maybe want to protect it. But you first have to be able to understand it, and, and art is a really great vehicle to get in the door. And the thing that these guys do that are, you know, where they're, they're enlisting a whole, you know, cast of volunteers, you know, that probably never thought in their wildest dreams that they'd be doing what they were doing, you know, <laughs> a couple months prior, and all these students that, you know, we're helping create an opportunity for, and working with scientists that get to be creative or are creative, like Mary is, you know, all that stuff really builds momentum over time, and, and water is the greatest muse in the world, you know, to, to tell a story, because it, it, is, it is something that, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, where you live, what you believe, you cannot live without, period. So you can, you know, Mark Twain's quote, whiskey's for drinking, water's for fighting. Well, that's, that's true. It's played itself out, and it will continue to play itself out. But, you know, I firmly think it's, 
it can also build community because you can find common ground around that water and then you, whatever that common ground is, even how small it is, that's where you work from, you know? So, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Do any of you have sort of tips or stories of how you've gone about just finding each other? And when you have like scientists and land managers and artists and oftentimes different groups sort of form their own niches and it's hard to find those connections across disciplines that obviously from what you've been showing can be really valuable. So in, in the work that we're showing today, we're, we're talking a lot about collaboration, and all of this depends on really open communication and being, um, being flexible and open to being out of your comfort levels and getting to know people um, in different fields. So one of, one of the tips that I share with students is to try to go to meetings and conferences and community events that are outside of their disciplines to have chances to network and hear other ways that people are approaching topics. And so that it, that's one gateway. But um, just to, to really be open to new experiences and new ways of, of thinking about how to approach common issues, common questions, and common problems so that we can have creative solutions that can cross boundaries. I'm sure that there is. I mean, it's all, all you need is really amazing artists like these guys, <laughs> you know, to to imagine what that is. I think not just art, but music. Um, I think there's a really great marriage between between. You know, I mean, music is an art form too, of course, but you collide those two things together. That's really powerful. And I, I think it. But it all has to. I think the people that know the landscapes best are the ones that live in those landscapes. You know, I. As a photographer, if somebody had sent me to the rainforest tomorrow to, on a two-month you know, assignment, I wouldn't do near as good a job coming back on the other end probably than somebody that knows that rainforest like the back of their hand. I know the prairie. I can go out into the grasslands and I know it because I feel it and I grew up in it and I understand it. You know? um, but I think each of us have sort of this habitat of, of the heart, you know, where we come from, and out of that comes um, you know, all of these beautiful things, hopefully. So, um, and the great thing about riparian areas is that they are absolutely everywhere, you know? I mean, even in the deserts, so. Yes, ma'am. My husband's family runs a cattle ranch in the Sand Hills, and oh, really? I can't wait to share this with them. I probably know them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <You might. laughs> um, and uh, I work in agriculture primarily, and we ask this question all the time, where does your food come from? Do you know right. where your food comes from? So I'm really interested in your, where does your water come from, take on it. And, mm -hmm. um, and when it sounds like you asked Bob, the beet farmer, that question. And mm -hmm. do you ask that question to a lot of the people that you talk to, and what do you hear? What do I get? Um, I get a lot of uh, from the faucet, you know, and uh, I get a lot of people maybe know locally where it comes from, but they don't know the next step. Like they may know that they get it from that irrigation canal or they get it from that reservoir, but they don't know where that comes, you know, that water comes from. So we talked earlier today, you know, about the about protecting headwaters, um, you know, it's, it's it's our dream that everybody will know one day that entire um, pathway, you know, from their faucet, from their bathtub, um, all the way back up to, um, to where that very first source of water is, whether or not it's high in the mountains or it's fossil water that comes from deep underground. So, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, we get that. A, a lot when we work in urban areas. Um, and then we ask people in an urban area, 
do you know where your watershed is? Uh, most people don't think they have a watershed if there's concrete. Um, so we try to demonstrate that or ask them to go out on a rainy day. But um, that, that's where we're oriented. And, and to kind of tie that into um, riparian areas, we, we feel that the riparian area is really kind of the bottom of a watershed. And so everything leads to that. Um, we recently had a project where we were working um, in a tree plantation trying to get it to uh, work with the scientists that are migrating it to a forest. And we were working with the school, and we did our talk about everything's a watershed. And, and it wasn't until we told the students that there's a lake at the end of the plantation that they just, ah, just <laughs> changed their whole perspective of what they were doing in the forest. Um, I'm inspired, but I also know better than to keep people from lunch. So let's uh, thank our artist panel, and we'll reconvene at 2.